For years, St. Cloud has been known for small town living, but I bet you didn't know that over the last couple of years, St. Cloud has become the second fastest growing city in the entire state of Florida. With so many people moving here, I'm gonna give you a few reasons why St. Cloud may not be a good fit for you. Now, I asked in a local Facebook group, a rants and raves group, no less, and, and I asked a lot of my clients who have bought homes in St. Cloud over the last six years. And the overwhelming response from everybody is that the number one issue that they have living in St. Cloud is the traffic. Now, to be fair, I think part of this, there's a couple things that are going on. So number one is people that have lived in St. Cloud for a very long time. Now, like I told you, St. Cloud has become the second fastest growing city in the entire state. So there's been a huge influx of people that have moved in. In fact, in the last couple of years, there's been a 2% population increase. That's a lot of new people coming into the area. But it's not necessarily the everyday traffic that is super problematic. Although to be fair, the city has actually done quite a bit to address that. Now there's new stoplights that have been put in pretty much throughout the entire city. So a lot of major intersections where there have been notoriously been issues, uh, brand new stoplights are there. We have new stoplights all throughout Highway 192, which goes through in the entirety of St. Cloud. So there's been a lot of that. There have been several traffic studies in major dense areas throughout the city. But the biggest issue is actually on the turnpike entrance. Now, the biggest problem with that is that there's only one entrance to the turnpike in St. Cloud proper, and that is one entrance northbound on what is now called Clay Whaley Road. Now, this turnpike entrance is problematic really for a couple of reasons. Number one, most of the roads that lead up to it, at least coming from the south, it's a one lane road. So there's a significant bottleneck getting onto this road. Now, a lot of people that live in St. Cloud work outside of St. Cloud. So if you work in maybe downtown Orlando or any other suburbs of Orlando, it's very likely, especially depending on what side of town you would live in, that you would need to use the turnpike to get to where you're going. So if you need to get on the turnpike in the morning during rush hours, it is a big problem. Now, to be fair, there are measures that are being done to address this specific problem. Specifically, what's going on is there is a huge new turnpike interchange that's being built on Nolte Road, and this is gonna be just north of Kissimmee Park Road. This new interchange will have a north and south entrance and exit, which will help a lot of people get onto and off of the turnpike in short order. Now, this will do a significant amount of heavy lifting to alleviate this issue at Clay Whaley Road and hopefully make everybody's morning commute a little bit smoother. Now, not unrelated to the traffic is the overall infrastructure in the city. So there's a couple of things to note, especially when it comes to some of the public services. I'll give you one example. So there is a fire station on the east side of town. Now, this particular station services a lot of very rural areas and pockets of St. Cloud. Now, the response time to some of these areas has been upwards of 10 minutes. Now, that is a little bit too long, especially when it's literally a life and death situation. But to address this, the city is already building a fire station off of 192 between Narcusi Road and Nova Road. This will, upon completion later in 2024, reduce that response time from 10 minutes to about five minutes. Now, in addition to this new fire station on the east side of town, there are already plans for another fire station on the west side of town. Now, as a resident of St. Cloud myself, I can admit that there have probably been some maybe poor decisions made in some of the city planning or maybe some surprises that have come with the huge influx of new residents here in the area. But the city is doing their level best to address these issues and better accommodate all of our new neighbors. Now, another reason you may want to think twice before moving to St. Cloud is some of the distance to some of the area amenities. Now, this was honestly one of my biggest adjustments when I moved to St. Cloud. Previously to living here, we lived in an area where, I mean, pretty much anything and everything that we could want was within 10 minutes at maybe most from where we live. Now, St. Cloud is a bit more removed. So you gotta remember that St. Cloud used to be a very rural, small town that was pretty well outside of Orlando. So a lot of entertainment, dining, restaurants, different things like that, they're about 
30 minutes plus away from St. Cloud. Now this was one of the things, like I said, that was a challenge for me, but also this is one of the things that came up most often when I talk to my clients in particular, that they love living here, they love the lifestyle. A lot of people in particular really love living close to the lake and enjoying that aspect of things, but the amenities that are rich throughout the Orlando area are not quite as prevalent right now in St. Cloud. Now as St. Cloud continues to grow and develop, you do see many more things coming into the area, rumors, rumble, developers, different things that are happening. But right now, you should know that if dining, entertainment, and a lot of different sort of activities, having quick, immediate access to those things is really important to you, you're gonna need to know that you may have to drive a little bit to access them. Now, really, all that being said, I think that our distance from Orlando, but our relative proximity to just about anything in greater central Florida is actually a huge benefit. So what I love about being in St. Cloud is that we're a little bit outside of the hustle and bustle of the big city of Orlando. We're also outside of what would be considered the more touristy areas in and around the theme parks. So we don't have the tourist traffic, we don't have big city traffic, either but all those things are relatively close to us we can get to the theme parks within about 30 minutes any of them including Universal, Epic Universe, SeaWorld, all of the Disney parks. Downtown Orlando is about 30 minutes away, and the Orlando airport is about a 20 to 25 minute drive just straight up the turnpike. Now, if you're not familiar, Brightline pretty recently actually opened up the Orlando terminal, and this terminal will give access to all of Central Florida. So you can get down to Miami within a couple of hours on the Brightline high-speed train, and this also goes into West Palm Beach and is going to be expanding out to Tampa and the West Coast as well. Now from here, we can also be on the East Coast beaches within about an hour and on the West Coast beaches in somewhere between one to two hours, depending on where exactly you wanna land. If immediate access to beaches, nightlife, restaurants, entertainment, all that stuff is really critical to you, St. Cloud may pose a little bit of a challenge, but if you're okay being a little bit outside of that hustle and bustle, outside of the tourist areas, but still having relatively easy access to everything from Magic Kingdom to Kennedy Space Center to the beaches, St. Cloud may actually be a really good option for you. Hey, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying this video, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this. Now, if I'm being honest, most of the complaints I've received about St. Cloud's growth have been from people that have lived in St. Cloud for many, many years, if not have grown up living in and around this area. And I understand, what was once a very small rural agricultural community has grown into a very suburban area just outside of Orlando with a booming population and a very different vibe than it had even just a handful of years ago. So I have empathy for where they're coming from, but I have to be honest, having lived in St. Cloud myself for the last six years, I love living here. And not everything was easy for my family to get adjusted to, but we have adjusted and we've really grown our roots here. We love the people, we love the community, and we love the proximity to anything and everything that we could possibly want to do in all of Central Florida. Now, let me give you a couple of reasons why St. Cloud may be actually a very good option for you. If you are looking for a home with a little bit of space, if you want some land, St. Cloud is a really phenomenal option. Even though St. Cloud has grown quite a bit, there are still very many areas that are more rural in nature. So you do have a bit more land and there's a lot of areas without HOA communities. So if you're a person that does not want an HOA telling you what to do, or what not to do with your property, you will find a lot of really solid options in this area. Now, St. Cloud is on the southeast corner of Orlando. As Lake Nona continues to grow and develop and the area of Sunbridge continues to develop, the space between these areas and St. Cloud continues to shrink. That will give us, the residents of St. Cloud, much easier access to more amenities, more dining, and more entertainment. In my opinion, St. Cloud is one of the best bang for your bucks that you can get in the greater Orlando area lower prices, more land, and more options. My name is Chad, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about buying, selling, or investing in real estate here in St. Cloud, be sure to reach out. Subscribe for more videos just like this or watch one of these right now.